Hey, what's up guys? My name is Jamie. I'm with the Lab Buddhist Temple of Denver Dragon Boat Club. To my side here, we have some members of the Posco Fighting Dragons, Matt and Joey. Uh, we're excited to bring you guys another interview. We're going to talk about Dragon Boat, the sport, and really get to know these guys and what Dragon Boat uh, means to them. So, appreciate you guys listening. Um, let's just jump right into it. The so the purpose of actually the purpose of the goal is to share more about the sport, so people know more about it because it is a growing sport across the globe. So uh, we want to share with you what Dragon Boat means to us. First off, um, tell me about your uh, your journey with with Dragon Boat. Oh man, it started. It's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, it is. You know we. Pasca has been part of drag boating here in Colorado for 19 years now. So within those 19 years, I've participated in 13 years. 13 years? Just about, yeah. Done it seven? About seven, going on seven for you. Isn't it, like, knowing how young we are, isn't it crazy to say that we've done something that long? Yeah, you know, dude, it's crazy. 13 years, that's a long time. Yeah. Especially when I meet people at the festival and it's our first time here, I'm like, wow. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Nice. Yeah, there's a lot to see. How did uh, how did you get involved? How did it start? Well, my family's been part of Pasco since like the beginning. My grandma's one of the first family members of it. Mm -hmm. And then my sister's been doing it for you know, how long? Right, just she got as long as you. Yeah. Yeah. So family. Yeah. Same with me. Just being part of that community here in, in Colorado, you know, you see it growing up. So you get to that age and you're just so excited to jump right in. Yeah. So so Posco has raced at the CDBF. For 19 the years. The Colorado Dragon Boat Festival for 19 for years. 19 years. Oh, dang, I had no idea. Isn't that amazing? And then you started 13 years ago. Okay. Um... Tell tell me tell me a little bit about Possible Fighting Dragons. What what's the organization? What what's the organization? And then what what you know what you guys represent, your team and such. So Posco is the Filipino American Society of Colorado. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization based out of rural Colorado, and um, essentially it's just the the founding of our parents coming to a new country, a new country, and raising us children and bring and instilling the. Um, you know, the fighting attitude of the Filipino pride, you know, here in the States, you know, keeping us culturalized and connected with our roots, you know, from the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Is that how you guys met each other? Or did you know each other before? Before Pasco? Yeah. yeah. Our families were part of Pasco before yeah. we were probably even thought. You know? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean, yeah, it's like, it's one of those things where so like the, the, community, the, the community is so large, you know, it, it really just brings us all together as one, one large family. Mm -hmm. That's cool. How many... How many people are in, not the team, but just our organization, the community? Oh, yeah. I don't know, we had a general meeting the other week. Uh, as of right now, there's probably close to 200 active hospital members yeah. in Colorado. Nice, nice. And then in terms of the team, are, is everyone on the team part of POSCO? Yes. So since we are a nonprofit mm -hmm. and we do um, fundraise and, and use our funds through our organization, um, to be part of the team, you have to be a POSCO member, which is, it's not hard at all. So. That's cool. That's really cool. Very inclusive then. Right. Or exclusive, actually. Uh, exclusive. Essentially, yeah. 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 Nice. What is the age range of your team members? Seventeen, sixteen. I think we had younger than that, though. Really? Well, remember when Melanie first started? Maybe fourteen years old. Fourteen. Yeah. So fourteen. The and how old is Rich? Thirty-nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Am I gonna name the range. oldest person? Call <laughs> 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 oh, him out. How old is that guy? So seventeen to thirty-nine. Yeah, yeah. roughly. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Okay. High school age. Yeah. So yeah. relatively young. High, to yeah, relatively yeah. young to all the way to having a family. That's <laughs> awesome. You know. What are uh. What are some festivals you guys have raced in? Is it CBDF? CBDF, yeah. Um, what else? G GW GWN. GWN. Couple of them. And, then and I think that's all. Because we raced out of state, GWN. Oh, yeah. What's, what's GWN again? Um, it's an international. Yeah. It, it's an international group, right? For? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it stands for. Yeah. But Honestly, I know. Yeah, but it's, it's, an, it's international an international Dragon Ball club. Fest. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, how uh, 
So GWN Florida, right? Yeah, so that's Florida. GWN. Oh, that is GWN. That is GWN. Yeah. Okay. And then Colorado Springs, GWN. Colorado Springs, Denver. So and then we'll race in Concord Pacific for the first time next year. Oh yeah, you guys are going to Vancouver. Vancouver. That's a whole different festival. That's not GWN, or is oh, it? Oh, actually, I think it is GWN. Yeah, because I think it's going to be signed up. It's still GWN. Really? Yeah, like what so. other? Organization. I don't know. I actually, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But that's a different festival. That which is really cool because I'm sure Vancouver is yeah. big. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Have you guys been in touch with Carrie Chow and setting that up, or you just mm. kind of did your own thing? No, we kind of did it on our own. Carrie mm -hmm. Chow actually sent us an invitation for Hong Kong. <laughs> ah. Which unfortunately yeah. we probably won't be able yeah. to do. <laughs> well, Vancouver is a big race, so that that would yeah. be fun. Well, well, I want to dive into that in a little bit. Okay. Um, Matt, tell me about your role with the team? So I kind of took a leadership role with the team about six years ago. Even about six years ago I, I kind of got put into this leadership role to take over and we were kind of in a hot spot. I'm not going to lie to you. We were kind of in a hot spot that time as a team. If nobody was going to step up, probably wouldn't have a team. Wow. So it was kind of that, you know, six years ago I was what? 20 years old, okay. you know, being in that position was like, wow, am I really going to dedicate my time to this, you know, how much do I love this sport, and you know, six years down the line, you know, we've taken home plenty of medals, created plenty of memories, created bonds that can't ever be broken, yeah. you know, so it's one of those things where it's like, oh yeah, I love this sport, so being in that position, you know, being part of this team was like, um, it, I'm lost for my words right now, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of like, uh, it was like, someone had to step up, you rose to it, and you it really just filled the path, it filled in your, your life basically. Pretty much, you know, because like, I don't, I don't know what it would be like without dragon boating now. You know, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, someone's like, hey, you know, do you want to go out of the country and Joan's like, no, dude, I've got Dragon Ball. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a, set, a, whole it's like a set schedule in my life now. You yeah. know, it's one of those things that's hard to, hard to think of that, I, like if I didn't have it. Um, I'm sorry, I totally went off of your question. No, like, you know, that's good. away from your question. No, that's good, but something that you said, that point that really stood out to me is, although you're, you had to turn down some vacations and stuff like that, you're still able to Travel. I mean, you guys are oh, sure. Vancouver, right? Sure. That's yeah. fun. That's fun. And then you said six years ago. That's kind of how long you've been racing then. Should about yeah. Did you did you guys join? Did you join when he was kind of taking over or? A before? Yeah, because because uh, it used to be you and Brian. Yeah, before. me and Brian were the first ones. And then Queen Mark took over when I joined. The year after, yeah. right? So nice. that's when I joined. Nice. Okay. Um. What's a little, bit, a little more about yourselves, I'm so curious. Did you grow up playing sports? Yeah. Yeah, what did you grow up playing? Um, when I was growing up, just soccer, um, tennis, mm -hmm. and then in high school, I did track and wrestling. Track and wrestling. Yeah. What about yourself? I grew up playing baseball. You played baseball? I played baseball. Oh, okay, yeah. nice. Nice. Do you, guys, do you guys see a correlation with, like, you have to be sport athletic to be able to do dragon boat? Yes and no. It plays a role. It does. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely brings and the, uh, the competitiveness. I feel yeah, like okay. if, if you've you never played sports sport. and then you start playing or you start growing, and it's like you kind of bring that aspect of uh, like determination to mm -hmm. play already. You know, someone that has already played a sport. Yeah. Would you say? Would you say there are? Do you guys have teammates that like have never really gotten into sports, but yes. they're like pretty good and they've picked up really well? Yeah. Yes. Is that cool to see? It's amazing, actually, and it's one of those things where you, you gotta. It takes time with them, you know. You can't expect someone to know how to do this, whether or not they are athletic or not. I've seen athletic guys gas on the boat. I've also seen people that have never paddled be phenomenal at it. You yeah. know, it's definitely a patient sport. <laughs> definitely gotta be patient. Right, because it's such an intricate movement. There's it so is. much that goes into it that mm -hmm. you can either learn it quick or it takes a while, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. Nice. So then, so I, I guess one of my, my point in that question is like anybody can really do dragon boat, right? Anybody. Yeah. 
I mean, if you think about the cancer Ooh. survivor teams out there, like, isn't that amazing? Wounded Warriors? Wounded, Wounded Warriors. Warriors. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. that is, like, the most inspirational yeah. thing mm-hmm. for Dragon Ball. Yeah. Like, period. <laughs> I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. So a little, con- yeah. a, little, a little context, Wounded Warriors is a team here. It's a, a veterans team. They have three different teams, but they have paddlers who have one arm, one leg, no legs. Blind. 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 Yeah. I mean, to... I, I have to I have to interview them, but that's 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 cool to watch. Yeah, it's amazing. Them. It's absolutely amazing. If you guys have never seen them race, I would recommend it. It's that's amazing. why that's why Dragon Boats is so amazing. Yeah. Um, did what? Um, I guess the sport of Dragon Boat. Good segue, I guess. How would how would you describe it to someone? Like, have you ever asked like, I do Dragon Boat. What the heck is Dragon Boat? How do you describe it to someone? How do you describe it to someone? The longest two minutes of your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, yeah. honestly, yeah. In two minutes is short. Never been on a dragon boat. Yeah. No kidding. How would you? How, how do you tell someone what? Like, how do you explain the actual like sport of it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the way yeah. I explain it, I, I, you know, I, it's forty-two foot long canoe. <laughs> It's 42 feet. Okay. 42 yeah. foot long canoe. There's 20 of us trying to move it all at once. 500 meters down the lake. Yeah. Yeah. First one down wins essentially. One person that steers. One person that drums. Yeah. I've always found that interesting to explain what it is. Yeah. It's such a yeah. new newer sport. Sure. Newer ish, right? It's yeah. It's, I mean, it goes newer ish. 2,000 year old Chinese. Yeah. Sport. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> newish. Newish. <laughs> not not mainstream. I guess yeah. you should say. <laughs> Um, do you do you guys do any other water sports? Not really. No. Paddleboard. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I mean for, for fun, fun yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. jet ski. Yeah. I mean, in, board. in Colorado, not not, not, really, not, yeah. not much to do. Not much. Water, though, yeah. Water, 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 water. Yeah. yeah. Mostly mountains, right? Oh, OC uh, outrigger canoes. Oh yeah. You know, we have one, so that's good training. We like to take that out. Mine out. Yeah. What do you What do you enjoy most? about Dragon Ball Racing? Oh, dude. Camaraderie. Yeah. Fr- the friendships. The family. I mean, it's yeah, family. It like, is. We're just one big family. Mm-hmm. No matter who it is who shows up, whether it's 13 years, 7, first year, I mean, it's we're so welcoming. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's just so same. much fun to just yeah. hang. I mean, you see each other what, three times a week. And a lot of us more than yeah. that, well, you yeah. know? So or some so people just once a week or twice a week, but yeah. it's still, yeah, but it's still, still good. You, you oh, see yeah. them often enough for like the next six months that you just you know you hang out with them and give mm-hmm. them a pretty strong friendship. It is. It's nice. pretty amazing. So a little a little more context. We uh, I'm with LBT of course. Pasco has been one of our biggest rivals. Since but, we were <laughs> since we were young, yeah. yeah, well, yeah. I want to get into that in a little bit, but <laughs> they're also some of our biggest friends at the festival. And, and to see that evolve has, has really is a true like it's amazing like yeah it's like a blessing to, to see all this you know it really shows the sport overall. oh yeah oh, the yeah. sportsmanship camaraderie um, let's I want to go back to that I want to dive into <laughs> when we started so oh, 13 years ago youth team youth team right youth team how many years did you do youth uh, I, I, it stopped doing. I mean, they stopped doing it. But yeah, because there was that kind of transition year where they're allowing some of the youth paddlers to paddle with the adults. Right, remember, right. Um, how old were we then? I think it was maybe sixteen or seventeen when when it kind of transitioned into being strictly just adult teams or mm-hmm. or one league, if, if you will. Yeah. So you started six years ago. I don't think you ever raced on the youth team, did you? Mm-mm. Did your sister? My sister was, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you, you saw it kind of. Yeah, I was always distance. there. I was always mm-hmm. at the, the festivals. And how did? How, so, I'm curious. What was your kind of? What was your viewpoint? Like, you just watched, or like, oh, I want to do this. Somebody I've invited always, me. Yeah. I've always wanted to, but I was just didn't have the time and. I don't know. And then when, once I joined, I was like, why was I not doing this forever? The whole time. <laughs> so your older sister was doing it, but you're like, yeah. Just my sister, you know. Yeah, because she did maybe three or four years. Three or four years with the youth team, yeah. yeah. So you did so youth team for four, four or five years. Do you remember that year you guys took gold in the beat? You guys, yeah. yeah you, I, I'll never forget this. So La Buddha's Temple, they are five-time defending champions for a two 250 meter goal. And as a youth division, youth division, we only raced 250 meters. We never did 500 meters. Because it was on the flag catching boats. 
No, remember we were on the sprinter boats. Were the we? champions. They were champion oh. boats. They weren't the Gemini okay, boats. Okay, okay. And oh, we, were, sorry. we were racing on the east side of the lake. Oh, oh yeah, it was, it was weird. Time. It was weird. And sorry to interrupt. Continue, sorry. We didn't take gold this year, okay? But we did beat LBT. And then we lost in the championship race to Great Wall of China. You did? We took silver. Yeah, we beat you guys in the pre, like the semi final. To, to get into the final. And then Great Wall of China beat us for the gold medal. Yes. I did not know that. So it was kind of like a an upper and a downer at the same time because we're like, oh my god, we beat Lao. And then it's like, oh my god, we just lost. <laughs> Damn, I did not know that. That yes, is dude. news to me. I, I thought you guys we took were, it that year. I think we were 15 years old. I was, at least I was 15 years yeah. old. And yeah, we had beat you guys and lost a great wall in the championship <laughs> damn i did not know that and then after that that was the year i trans i left the youth team because i got older yep um but uh how did you guys how many more years did you, did you guys win the years after that no we didn't take our first gold until 2014. Mm. wow talk about the come up so that was from <laughs> let's see 2009 or 10. We beat you guys. It was either 09 or 10, and then we went four more years without a first place. And then for 2014, we took finally took home Bosco's very first gold medal. Nice. And then you guys just been on a roll. And we yeah. kind of rolled. From what, so yeah. when you started, did you guys? What year was that? 13. 13. 13. So one more year, and then you guys. And then we swept the festival that year. Mm -hmm. There's a secret weapon right here. Is that <laughs> <laughs> no, that's pretty sweet. Um, how many, so then, I said I wasn't going to get into this, but <laughs> that's been, what, five, five, six years of consecutive golds, at least one every year, right? So, of the last six years, we've taken home five golds. Yeah, wow. That's good work. That's good work. How many, so your, your girlfriend's on the team, too. Mm -hmm. How long has she raced? Since she was 12 years old as well. 12? That's crazy. What? To do such well, a sport as technically, such a... I'm not allowed to say that. We were supposed to be 13 to sign up. <laughs> oh, but we were we were hurting. We were hurting bad. Oh, wow. So I, we both actually got recruited when we were 12 years old. So on, are they going to go on the low key? <laughs> CBF is going to go back and like, wait, 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 go wait. Videos. <laughs> It's not that serious, but it, it gets really competitive. <laughs> they won't go back and revoke it. Um, but that's pretty cool. I mean, to yeah. do with. Well, to have That's someone younger is actually impressive. Yeah. Actually impressive. Um, what advice would you give to someone who is considering Dragon Ball Racing? Do it. It's fun. I mean, <laughs> for sure. Um, you know, there's a lot of dedication to this sport, you know, so that's, if, if there's one thing that I can give, that's probably the one thing is, is make sure that you are going to dedicate that time to the sport um, and what you'll get from that is more than more than I can even say, you know. So yeah, yeah. Was there something that totally like flipped the switch for you to be like, I gotta join the team? What was that one thing? I don't really know what it was. It was just like my sister was peer like, pressure. Hey, yeah, <laughs> yeah, my sister you was just like, hey, people? you <laughs> should come to practice. I'm like. That's, how, that's how it all starts. <laughs> Wait, I'm not doing anything. Like, hey, sure. yeah, yeah, that's how it all starts. Hey, what are you doing on Sunday morning? Come sit on the boat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then obviously the physical aspect is good for health, right? Sure. If you want to get into shape, it might be a good thing to do. Absolutely. Well, what is what would you say is the toughest thing about Dragon Ball? Um, you know, that might be different for Joey as it is for me. Yeah, I'd love to hear both perspectives. Yeah, go ahead. I, don't know. I, can't really think of I was gonna say Joey got voted the hardest worker on the team, so <laughs> it's like I don't know what's not, what nice. is tough for you on the team. I don't know. He comes to practice with a weight vest on. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> nice. That's that's work, man. That's, uh, that is work. So from your perspective, and, and you, you're the leader of the team, what are some? What would you say is the toughest thing? So some of the difficulties for me, honestly, you know, like you said, being being a team leader, being one of the captains, is finding the balance between being a coach, being a friend, and, you know, like you said, my girlfriend's on the team as well, being a significant other. You know, it's finding the balance between all of those because I'm extremely competitive, 
and I want to push my team as hard as I can push them, but I don't want to push them to the edge. You know, I don't want anyone to crack on me. I don't want to feel as if I'm crossing the line with anyone. You know, my friendship and my relationship with these people on the boat are much more important to me. You know, that's really what makes us a team, you know, is is what we create together. So it's just crossing that line, you know, finding the balance between how far can I push these guys? You know, am I crossing the line? Am I overstepping my, my boundaries, you know, their boundaries? So I think that's definitely the hardest thing for me is is communicating with them in a way that they understand me at the same time they know that I respect them, you know. So Yeah, yeah, leadership is a is a big part of driving work because it is. to be able to man to manage and, and lead and motivate a team of twenty 25 typically on a so roster, yeah, 25 sure. typically on a roster, it's a big sport. Um, from, and this is going to be a, a very deep, uh, hard question to answer right away, but from a non-leadership position, because mm-hmm. obviously as a leader you have to be able to, to put yourself in your shoes sometimes. How, what would you say is their, what would you say is the biggest, the toughest thing from their perspective? could probably answer that better than me right now. I guess finding the balance between like um because there's just so many people so many voices on the boat and obviously you gotta be one boat like in unison but like trying to have your voice heard but at the same time not messing up the flow I guess that sometimes that's uh what happens in our boat where we're like one person says this, one person says this, and there's just so many back and forth, but at the same time, you want to be still a team. The teamwork aspect. Yeah. And obviously, I've heard that that's probably the most reward, one of the most rewarding parts is that team aspect. Yeah, sure. Nice. Nice. What, um, I don't even know how, how long we've been going, so I'll just wrap up with some questions here. <laughs> um, tell me about your first Dragon Boat Festival, the very first one, what were your emotions, I mean, just kind of like your, your, I mean, we feel ready to kind of talk about that, but like, just like, just raw, like, what the hell am I doing, type of stuff. Oh, man. Well, my first, first race, I was sitting behind him, and I was executing the Dragon Boat, and I was just like, they're like, they're veterans in the team, and I saw how calm they were, and I was like, alright, well. Let's do it. Let's just go. Well, I was just ready. Because everyone, you know, I mean, you've experienced it too. Like, when you're pointing up to that starting line, it's just... Oh, what a rush. Everyone just <laughs> focused. Like, yeah. Everyone's going through emotions, but everyone's just, like, focused in. Yeah. And, like, speaking of, <laughs> Yeah, speaking of uh, the longest two minutes, how about the longest... Paddler's ready! Attention! Oh, before the horn? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jesus. That's a long one second. That's a that long is, one, yeah. That is... Anxious. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what about your first race? First race. You know, I I can't tell you if this was my first race, but when you said emotions, like what were you feeling? I specifically I was young, maybe thirteen or fourteen. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> thirteen or fourteen. <laughs> alright, alright. <laughs> and we had been on a fly catching boat and I remember we had lost by maybe half a second you know how close the races they can be you know so it was a 250 fly catching meter or a fly catching race Um, we had just got off the boat we were standing kind of in the uh, like staging area waiting for the announcers to kind of go over the times and I Heard that we had lost by less than half a second or something, and the emotions. And that's why something I'm saying I can't tell you if it was my very first race or not. But being new to the sport, still not knowing exactly what I'm doing or what to do, you know, you just you get off the boat knowing how much work and effort that you and the whole team had just put down together, and then hearing that you all lost, the emotion like within the group was just. Undescribable. I mean, everyone starts tearing. You, know, right, you start right. tearing. You know, can't catch your breath. You're like, what the hell just happened? You know, just the fact of knowing like you worked so hard um, and you 
you didn't get the outcome you wanted. It was like, it hurts. It was, you know, it, it was one of those things where you're like, you know, how do I get better? How do I win next? How how am I going to win next? How could I have pushed harder? Exactly. Kind of stuff. Yeah. So. I mean, the urge to the competitive side is like, ah, I want, I need it. Yeah. And get me back out there. I can do it exactly. Again. Yeah. And that's kind of the race that, uh, you know, I think about that race a lot. Like that crosses my mind a lot. And it's that specific moment. You know, I can I can even tell you what color my life vest was. It was a red life vest. <laughs> Seriously, like yeah, it's that. You know. Impactful. Yeah, it was that impactful to me. So yes. nice, nice, cool. Uh, two, two more questions. Uh, outside of Dragon Boat, who is Joe? That's a good question. Just who Ed. am I? Joseph. 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 Oh yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Dragon Boat's a pretty big part of my life now. Yeah. So. Yeah, who am I? <laughs> you're, you're you. Me, dude. <laughs> actually, I want to hear from you. Actually, well, who's Joey outside that? Yeah. Who's Joey outside? <laughs> Joey is the... He is wild. <laughs> Joey is the man. If you want to do anything, Joey is the man to call. He's down? He's always down to, to go on the adventure. You know, I can call Joey on a Sunday morning and say, hey, you want to go drive? And he wouldn't even ask where. He would just say, I'll be at your house in 10 minutes, <laughs> period. <laughs> That's you know, cool. do you want to go ride? You know, do you want to go do this? you want to go here? No questions asked. Sure. And he's also the guy, if you need any help, Joey, I need you right now. Where you at? He's like, he's like, you know, he's one of our best friends, you know, between me and Jordan, like, he's one of our best friends, you That's know, cool. so he's like the man that we can count on, you know, he's That's always cool. there for you. You know, he's, he's caring, he's compassionate. So yeah, and to do a sport like this with your, your homies, right? Oh yeah, that's a big thing between yeah. us. Um, so then, outside of Jaiba, who is Matt? Just uh, what you see is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> a good person. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Remember, guys, be a good person. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> nice. Um, no, I'm just you know, I'm just your average guy. You know, I work a nine to five. Well, a 5.30 to 3. <laughs> yeah. I'm an early bird. That's fair. But, um, yeah, man, just just you know, I'm a guy, like Joey said, Dragon Boat's a big part of my life. I mean, you got to think, since we've been traveling for Dragon Boat, we do Dragon Boat. Our shortest, our, our longest season, we had 14 weeks off in, in the year. Oh, wow. Yeah, from the day we started practicing to the day after, like, the day after our last festival was 14 weeks. Wow. That was our 14 long. days. No, 14 weeks, weeks off. Oh, okay. 14 weeks off. So, like, during the winter, that was it. 14 weeks, and then we were back to it. Back to it. So, you got to think. It's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to think. Like, what's an NBA season? You know, how many weeks do they have off? That's true. You know, that's their life. Yeah. I mean, you know, outside of that, I'm just a regular guy. You know, I work. You know, I have a girlfriend. I've got dogs. You know. Nice. But, yeah. There you go. There you go. One more question. What dream place would you like to travel to race? To race? race? To race. Oh. What dream place? Honestly, I, I the Kadayawan Festival of Davao, Philippines. That would be an cool. amazing festival yeah. to go to. Yeah. You know, that's like a raw festival. Yeah. I was, just, I was just thinking, it's yeah. got to be the Philippines. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's raw. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Good place. Cool. So what about well, you, Jamie? If you could. If <laughs> this you is my interview. This I'm interviewing you. This is our last this question. Is our last question. Yeah. Hong Kong. <laughs> no, we went to Oh, yeah. Oh, we went to <laughs> Dubai. I think oh, racing in Dubai cool. would be sick. And that they have a good, they have a pretty good team there too. Oh, really? it's like a women's team. Oh, yeah, they yeah, wow. have a pretty good women's team there. So I would go there. It's amazing. But yeah, first, lastly, I want to thank you guys for uh, taking time to chat with me about yeah, the sport. Thank you for having yeah, us. Thank yeah, you. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We appreciate you guys listening Thanks and listening. Um, stay tuned for our next interview. Peace out. <laughs>